In the last couple of videos, we've been looking at differential M forms on our N, the exterior derivative of an M form, which is an M plus one form, the Hodge operator on the space of M forms, which goes to the space of N minus M forms, and so on and so forth. And before we move on to more general types of things like this, we want to take a step back for a second and see how this links with classical vector calculus that you probably saw in a multivariable calculus class. But before we get into that, let's recall some things. So if we've got omega, which is a differential M form on Rn, then it can be written as a sum over these multi-indices I, F sub I, where those are smooth functions, and then DXI, where DXI is an elementary M form. So it's given by DXI1 wedge all the way up to DXIM. And for the details of that, I'll let you guys look at previous videos. Next, the exterior derivative of this M form, which we'll call D omega. So that's going to be the sum over the same set of multi indices. And then we sum from J going from 1 to N. We take the partial of Fi with respect to Xj, and then we wedge the elementary one form Dxj into the elementary M form Dxi, and that gives us an elementary M plus one form. So when you put all of this together, you have a differential M plus one form. So next, the Hodge operator. So we define the Hodge operator star on dxi to be dxj, the special elementary form such that dxi wedge dxj is dx1 wedge dx2 all the way up to dxn. In other words, it's the n volume element. Okay, now back to some definitions from standard multivariable calculus. So if we've got a function of three variables, the gradient of that function is given by the partial of f with respect to x in the i direction, the partial of f with respect to y in the j direction, plus the partial of f with respect to z in the k direction. And then next, if we have a vector field capital F, so that's going to be p in the i direction plus q in the j direction plus r in the k direction, then the curl of f is given by this combination of partial derivatives. So in the i direction, it's partial r with respect to y minus partial q with respect to x. In the j direction, it's partial p with respect to z minus partial r with respect to x. And then in the k direction, it's partial q with respect to x minus partial p with respect to y. There's a calculational method for finding that involving like crossing this differential operator into this uh, vector field right here. But again, this is from multivariable calculus. Um, and then next, the divergence of f is given by the partial of p with respect to x plus the partial of q with respect to y plus the partial of r with respect to z. So notice that's a scalar function. Okay, so now we want to make this identification between vector fields on R3 and one forms on R3, and that um, identification will be as follows. So if we have the vector field f, which is pi plus qj plus rk, we're going to identify that with the differential one form, p dx plus q dy plus r dz, and we'll go ahead and call that omega sub f so that we see that they're kind of related to each other. Now what we want to do is find some relationships between this super general case up here where we have this exterior derivative of a differential m form on Rn and this super special case down here that you work with all the time whenever you're doing vector calculus or maybe electricity and magnetism and stuff like that. Okay, and the first thing that we want to look at is the gradient of f is in fact just this exterior derivative on a zero form. So recall this gradient is a type of differential operator on a function, but functions can also be seen as um, differential zero forms. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that. So we've got df, so that means uh, using this definition right here, we need to sum from j equals 1 to 3 of the partial of f with respect to xj and then dxj. And then we're wedging that into kind of the zero form, but that's just 1, so we just end up with the dxj.
But now this is very clearly the partial of f with respect to x dx, where I'm thinking about x1 as being just x, and x2 will be y, and x3 will be z. And we'll just use dx, dy, and dz from here on out. So the next, we have the partial of f with respect to y dy plus the partial of f with respect to z dz. Great. But now by that identification up there, and maybe if you want to be super careful, there should be like quotes around this or you have some mapping from one to the other. Um, we'll have that this is equal to the partial of f with respect to x in the i direction plus the partial of f with respect to y in the j direction plus the partial of f with respect to z in the k direction, but that's exactly equal to this gradient of f. So in this case, you don't have to go far out of your way to notice that the exterior derivative of a zero form looks exactly like the gradient of a function with more than one variable. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and clean this up and we'll move on to how the curl is related to this um, exterior derivative. So now moving on to the relationship between the curl of a vector field, the exterior derivative of a one form, and the Hodge operator, we'll see that the curl of f is equal to the Hodge operator applied to the exterior derivative of this uh, differential one form. So let's talk our way through this. So omega sub f is a differential one form. D turns it into a differential two form. The Hodge operator turns it back into a differential one form. And at each stage, we can identify the differential one form with a vector field. Okay, so let's go ahead and see the sketch of the proof of this. We'll start from the right-hand side like we did before. So we need to do star D omega F. Great. So that means we're going to need to do star and then we need to do d, but omega f is going to be this pdx plus qdy plus rdz. So in fact, we're gonna have to do uh, nine things here because we need to run through all partial derivatives on this guy, this guy, and this guy. So let's see what we get. So let's run through the partial derivatives on pdx first. So we'll first have the partial of p with respect to x, and then we'll have dx wedge dx. And then next, we'll have the partial of q with respect to x, and then dx wedge dy. And then finally, the partial of r with respect to x, dx wedge dz. Great. So that's like running through this inner sum right here for the first like multi-index. But here we don't really have a multi-index because we're just dealing with a one form. And so we have a, like our multi-index is just a single index. So now let's move on to all derivatives of this with respect to y. So we'll have partial p with respect to y dy wedge dx. So that's what we get for that one. We'll have partial of q with respect to y dy wedge dy. And then finally, partial of r with respect to y, dy wedge dz. Now we need to work through all the partials with respect to z. So we'll have the partial of p with respect to z, dz wedge dx, plus the partial of q with respect to z, dz wedge dy, plus the partial of r with respect to z, and then dz wedge dz. But we know something about the anti-commutativity of the wedge product, so we can actually simplify this quite a bit. The dz wedge dz will cancel because anytime you wedge a one form with itself, you'll get zero. We showed that earlier. Same thing with dy wedge dy and dx wedge dx. And then some of these, these terms um, are the same up to a sign. So dx wedge dy and dy wedge dx are the same up to a sign. So in fact, we can have dx wedge dy and the coefficient of that will be partial q with respect to x minus partial p with respect to y. Great. And so, um, and we can see that because we needed to change the sign on this one right here. Okay, so we've taken care of the dx wedge dy. Now let's go ahead and do the dx wedge dz. So dx wedge dz. So let's see what we get for that. So this one is already in the correct order. So we have uh, partial r with respect to x, 
and then we've got one more so that's right here and that's in the incorrect order so when we change the order to dx wedge dz we'll have a minus partial p with respect to z okay great and then finally we need the dz wedge dy stuff so let's see what we get for that so we're gonna have dz sorry dy wedge dz we want to do it in alphabetical order so let's see we'll have partial r with respect to y so that's from this one right here and then this one we can change the sign and then those are our like terms so we have minus partial q with respect to z okay fantastic and then i should point out that we still need to apply the hodge operator to this whole thing okay so let's talk through what we get when we apply the hodge operator so when we apply the hodge operator to dx wedge dy we'll just easily get dz and that's because dx wedge dy wedge dz is exactly dx wedge dy wedge dz now let's see this thing so when we apply it here we'll either get dy or minus dy depending on if we need to commute for the sign and in this case we'll get a minus dy so i'll go ahead and put a minus dy here and if you need a little more details for this i, I did the last video on this kind of stuff and now let's see what we have right here so this is going to become dx after applying the hodge operator because if you wedge all of this into dx the dx moves twice to get back into the right spot so now let's write all of these out so notice for the dx term we have partial r with respect to y minus partial q with respect to z that's dx now we use this minus sign that we got from the hodge operator to switch the order of subtraction there so that's going to be plus partial p partial z minus partial r partial x and that's going to be dy and then finally we have this dz term so that'll be plus partial q partial x minus partial p partial y dz great but now we want to check if under our identification what we have down here is the same thing as the curl but it is notice for the dx component which would be like the i hat component we have partial r with respect to y minus partial of q with respect to z but that's exactly this term over here for the dy component we get exactly the j hat component over here and then finally for the dz component we get exactly the k hat component over here so in other words we have affirmed this relationship between the curl the exterior derivative and the hodge product the hodge operator so now i'll clean up the board and we'll see how the divergence and the exterior derivative and the hodge operator are related now we're ready to look at how the divergence of a vector field is related to the exterior derivative and the hodge operator of a one form and what we have is the following the divergence of f is equal to the hodge operator applied to the exterior derivative, applied to the Hodge operator, applied to our differential one form omega, where we're using this identification up here. Okay, so like we did before, I'll sketch this proof starting at the right hand side. So let's go ahead and start with star D star omega, but I'm gonna go ahead and write omega um, by its definition, which is PDX plus QDY plus R dz and let's recall that the star of a one form will be a two form so that when you wedge them together you get the volume three form in other words dx wedge dy wedge dz which is a special case of this kind of definition right here okay so if we star this dx notice that's just going to turn into dy wedge dz okay great and now when we star this dy so that's going to turn into dx wedge dz but we need a minus sign there because when we wedge them together we have to move the dy across the dx but we pick up a minus for that so this is a preemptive minus to cancel the one out from the commutativity or the anti-commutativity i should say and then now when we star the dz we'll get dx wedge dy and we actually don't need to worry about anything with the sign there because the x or sorry the dz commutes past two things picking him a minus one squared okay so that means now we have star and then the exterior derivative of this two form p 
dy wedge dz plus q, sorry, minus q dx wedge dz plus r dx wedge dy. Now we'll apply this exterior derivative to this two form and that's gonna give us a three form. And I should say we're using this formula here, but we won't go into as many details as we did before because we can just use the fact that if we wedge a dy into this term, we get zero because we'll have two dy's. If we wedge a dz term into this, we'll also get zero because we'll have two dz's. And similarly for dx and dz here and dx and dy here. So we only really need to worry about taking the partial of this with respect to x, y, and z down there. So that means here we're gonna get star and now we'll have the partial of f with respect to x, dx wedge dy wedge dz. So that would be like this inner thing happening right here. Great. And then minus the partial of q with respect to y, and now we're going to have dy wedge dx wedge dz. And then finally, the partial of r with respect to z, dz wedge dx wedge dy. But now all of these three forms are essentially the same up to a sign. So we can notice that we can move this dz past the dx and the dy and we get exactly dx wedge dy wedge dz. Notice we pick up a minus sign for each of those two um, applications of the commutativity. And so there's no overall minus sign. But if we move this dy into the right position, it'll cancel this minus sign out here. So in other words, if we move this here, we'll get minus dx wedge dy wedge dz. Whereas if we move this one, we get a plus dx wedge dy wedge dz. But any way you look at it, they're like terms. It's just here you get um, the minus signs canceling. Okay, so now we have star, but now we're gonna have this partial of P with respect to X plus the partial of Q with respect to Y plus the partial of R with respect to Z. And now we have the volume form DX wedge DY wedge DZ. Now we pl apply the star operator to this three form that turns it into a zero form. So in other words, we just get a function out of this. And the function we get is just um, given by these partial derivatives summed. So in other words, we get partial P partial X plus partial Q partial Y plus partial R partial Z, but that's exactly equal to the divergence of F. So we've shown that the divergence of F is related to this um, exterior derivative and the Hodge operator in the following way. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we'll look at a summary. As a summary, we saw under the identification that the vector field PI plus QJ plus RK was associated with this one form, PDX plus QDY plus RDZ, we saw the following relationship between the standard derivatives of multivariable calculus and the exterior derivative and Hodge operator. So the gradient of a function was the same thing as the exterior derivative of a zero form. The curl of a vector field was the same thing as applying the Hodge operator to the exterior derivative to a differential one form. Then finally, the divergence of a vector field was this composition of operations. We've got Hodge operator, exterior derivative, Hodge operator, and then differential one form over there. Furthermore, we can see that this like classic multivariable calculus homework problem becomes greatly simplified under this um, setup. So we proved in an earlier video that this exterior derivative always squares to zero. In other words, if you've got any differential M form at all and you apply the D operator to it twice, you always get zero. So notice that if we do the curl of the gradient of a function, that's the same thing as doing star to D to D to a zero form F. In other words, we're applying the exterior derivative twice to a differential zero form, but that gives us zero because this is always true. And then we've got a similar thing for the divergence of the curl. So the divergence of the curl of F, that's the same thing as star D, star, star D, 
um, omega, but in three dimensions at least, two stars just gives you the identity back to back to your where you started. And so here we have star d squared on that one form, but again, d squared is always zero, so we get zero here. So this squaring to zero is really a generalization of these two kind of like homework problems from multivariable calculus. And furthermore, these derivatives from multivariable calculus are all very, very special cases of this exterior derivative from the theory of differential forms. Okay, that's a good place to stop.